Welcome to this tutorial about interacting with 3D widgets in Unreal Engine 4 and 5. Today we're going to be exploring a little bit about how you can interact with widgets that exist in 3D space, unlike the normal widgets you usually interact with, which is the 2D space of a screen that's an overlay over your Red Nerd image. So let's jump into it. So here we are inside of Unreal Engine 4.26, but this works for Unreal Engine 5 as well. So let's talk a little bit about widgets. Uh, so normally you have widgets in uh, 2D space in the form of a screen that represents maybe your start screen or something like that, or maybe a HUD in the form of uh, life bars and icons displaying some kind of information to the player. Uh, that's not the only way to use widgets, of course. You can have widgets as life bars on, on top of players, for example, walking around in the world, sort of like World of Warcraft, for example. Um, there are also many other ways that you can utilize widgets. But today we're going to be talking about how you can interact with widgets that you have outside in the, th the 3D world and have use of all the functionality that widgets uh, have innate with them. So that means things like uh, changing their appearance and uh, having animations and all kinds of functionality. Now, uh, the use cases for this would most likely be something like, uh, uh, imagine you have a computer screen on a desk and you want the player to be able to interact with the computer screen easily without having some kind of like transition where it's like in a different view and now it can only interact with the screen and not move around anymore. Uh, this allows you to have the player uh, interact with the screen directly while still moving around freely in the world. It can also be used for something like a smartphone sitting on a uh, table and you want it to be able to the player to be able to type in a specific phone number for them to call or something like that. So you would have the numpad available. Uh, and equally, you could have something like an electronic key keypad on a wall next to a door, making sure that the player needs to input some kind of code, making sure that th they have the right code to open the door, for example. All of these kind of th kinds of things. Uh, other use cases would be something like maybe you would have a holographic projection, and at some points maybe it would have different options or interactions available to the player in the form of like... Uh, press here and you will zoom in on the holographic projection or press here and the holographic projection will show some other form of data and things like that. So it's a tool that can be used in pretty cool creative ways if you want to. And that's generally what we will be exploring today. So to do this, we need very few things actually. Uh, we need a widget, we need a blueprint to hold the widget and we need an interactor for this widget. So let's start off with creating a widget. So we'll make a folder and we'll call it blueprints, which is not super descriptive, but that's what we're going to be using. And we'll be keeping everything in here today because this is a small example. So we start off by creating our widget blueprint. We we'll call it w underscore keypad because let's pretend that this is the electronic keypad example that I was talking about earlier. Uh, and for a keypad you would generally have buttons and you would have somewhere between 9 and 12 buttons depending on the layout uh, let's just make a, a bunch of duplicates of the buttons so we have nine nine keys available just to us uh, it's, it's not super important and um, this example won't be really pretty but it's mainly to drive home the point of how this works right so now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine buttons here. The first important part we need to do is we need to make sure that we anchor this in the center. So all of them are marked and we anchor them in the center. The reason for this is because we're our example is not going to be super neat and we're not going to be playing around with dimensions and things like that. So we want the, the anchor to be in the middle to make sure that it's appearing where we're expecting it to appear. Next off, we want to reset the offset left and offset top. This means that it, since we have all of them marked, it will do it for all of them, meaning that they will now pile upon in the middle. We will then change our alignment, be 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, making sure that it's perfectly aligned in both the vertical and the horizontal. Um, after that, we are actually 
okay with starting to move some of these around and again this is not going to be super pretty but I'm just going to drag them out in a layout that resembles sort of, of what a keypad would look like, right? So this is what it would look like. Did I miss something? There we go. So now we have our nine keys and we would in normal instances if this was a keypad have a logic and stuff behind all of them but for now we're just going to be picking one of them Let, let's take, take the top one and we go down here and click on the on clicked event from this we're going to have a print string just to show that this will happen and we'll say clicked if this happens like so now we're pretty much done with our widget for now um, so we're gonna be making a blueprint now. So let's start and make a blueprint class of the type actor. We'll call this a BP keypad container. So this would be your blueprint that would be your keypad in this example. And we're gonna keep it super simple. We're just gonna be adding a widget. So we type a widget component over here. We call it keypad widget. So we're descriptive with our names. And then on the right here, you can see it has a widget class set to none. So let's make sure to choose our widget class. Now that you see that it has, it is centered now because we have the centered alignment from the widget. So it appears over here and we see all of the keys here. They're, they're really big and stuff, but that's fine for our exa example. Um, now we're pretty much done with our blueprint. So we save that and we go out into the world. And if we drag out our blueprint into the world now, you can see that it sort of appears here. But the problem that you first encounter is that it's gonna be, the X axis is pointing away from us, which means that the keys are visible, but from this direction, you can see. Uh, and the reason for that is because if we go to our blueprint, you can see that in the X direction, the red arrow, in that direction you can see that we we see it in this direction so we just want to rotate this around a little bit so it is visible for us like so okay so now we can actually walk around here and there you might have noticed i already have a winter inter widget interaction here so let's remove that and, and start from scratch so you see how that works when when you come into the character here this is where our uh, functionality will be when it comes to um, uh, interacting with the widgets. And the reason I had this was because I was making sure that it functions both the same way in Unreal Engine 4 and Unreal Engine 5. Um, so what you do is you want to add a component and we type in widget again. Now I'm going to have it in first person character, you might want to have it somewhere else. But what we want to add is the winter widget interaction here and we can call it widget interaction and the thing that you saw was that i had uh, checked the debugging here show debug and i made the debug thickness to 10 because that makes it easier to see what is actually happening because when you play this is the actual widget interaction it is basically a laser pointer into the world sort of like a ray trace or a line trace and this is what checks if it is interacting with some kind of a widget. Now, if you're looking up and down, you can see that, well, it doesn't seem to be like following where the camera is. And that is because when I created it, it's going to be uh, subservient to the capsule component. That's the hierarchy structure it got. We wanted to put it under the first person camera in this case, because we wanted to follow the rotation of the camera. So wherever the camera looks, we want it to uh, keep track of. So if now if we play, you can see that it's actually following wherever the camera is looking. So now if we walk over to our user interface here that we've made, you can see that it's actually uh, overlapping these things and you might see it or you might not, but they're slightly getting brighter if we hover over. To make this clearer, let's go to our widget again, to our designer, and we mark all our buttons again. Then we go to the part that says style and we go to tint and we click on the, the tint color, which is white by default. And we make it something more bright, like yellow. And we compile and save that. And then we go back into the world again. Now you'll see that we are getting this very bright yellow when we're hovering over a key, making sure that we actually are interacting with the, the buttons. 
Now, one thing you might notice is that if you're too far away, it doesn't seem to be lighting up. And that is because your widget interaction component actually has a length. So this is five meters currently, and this is the distance that it will actually be able to interact with a user interface widget. So depending on the usage for you in, in your case, um, you might want to have it like maybe one meter if you want it to be a character next to a computer or something like that. Or it might be something completely different. It might be a widget that's super far away and you want it to be able to show a tooltip or something like that. Um, your distance should be in reference to, to your use case, basically. But just so you know that this is what's driving it. And if we were to set something like 1500 here instead of 500, it would be 15 meters. So that means that we can pretty much like scan them from all the way over here. But we can't actually click on the buttons right yet. And that is where the next piece of code comes in. So we will make an event for the key of E, which is my favorite event key. And um, there we go. Then we drag in a reference for a widget interaction because this one allows us to show uh, the functionality that we have available to us. So if you drag from this and you type in press, you get a few different options here. The one that we're interested in is called press pointer key. Now we drag the pressed into this one and this will function like so that when we press our E key, we will send a message to whatever the widget interaction is able to communicate with and send an event to that. So for example, user interfaces generally use mouse, inter uh, mouse events. So if we choose left mouse button here, that means that when we press E, the widget interaction sends a left mouse button event to this uh, object that the widget interaction is currently selecting or pointing at basically. So if we were to go into the world now and play, we could go over here and we made a event for this one and we press E and nothing happens. But you can see that it stops being yellow now. It's no longer showing yellow. And if we go closer, you might be able to see that the top button there looks a little bit different. It looks like it's sort of indented. And the reason for this is what happened now was we pressed down, but we didn't press up. If we look at our widgets, we have the event on clicked, or I chose the one on clicked anyway. On clicked is the event that is called when you press down and press up a key. It is not something that happens on just pressing down. If we were to find our button four here, which is the one that this is related to, you can see that it has a few different events. It has an on clicked, an on pressed, on released, on hovered, and on unhovered. So if we were to add the on pressed, for example, and type in print string, and instead type pressed, we go back in and we find our key in the top and we press, you can see it says pressed, but nothing else. So it is detecting our, our information that we're sending over here. Uh, to the widget, so we're getting this, but we're not getting this. The reason for that is that we need to send the release event as well. So if we drag from the widget, release, and take the pointer key again. Make sure that it's again the left mouse key. And have it happen on the release of our E key. That means that we can now go in here, we can point over here, Holding down E, it shows pressed, and releasing the E key, it says clicked. And it goes back to actually uh, registering the hovers again. So that's how it works. It's quite simple and you can do a lot of stuff with it, but just to uh, reflect over what we've done. So we created a widget, which looks like this, which is what we're going to be interacting with. We have its events, which allows us to show, in this case, just that we're actually having them trigger. We have a blueprint, which has only, in this case, a widget in it of the right class, which will be able to let us put it into the world somewhere, which we did over here, so that we can actually interact with it. And then on our character, in this case, you might want to have it somewhere else, we have the widget interaction component. And from that, we're sending these events 
to whatever user interface inter widget that it is currently pointing at. And I hope that made sense. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you might have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.